I realize that I now I explain, yeah, I realize I didn't explain constraints and requires case as well as I could have. So I'll try to explain better this time. So let's say that hole, this kind of jumping ahead. So the hole in the part, right? That had a service finish columns on it, right? Or a service finish specification with that 8RA finish on it. Now I can leave that as a constraint. And when I drill my hole or mill my hole, the constraint is I have to have that service finish there, right? Or I can transform that into a requirement. And then I can make my hole as one requirement and then put that service finish on my hole. And those two, and putting as a constraint or a requirement are going to change your design frame. Because there's only so many ways you can make a hole with that service finish. But there are many ways to make the hole have that service finish. And that's why things can be in flux, they can change back and forth. Does everybody understand that a little better? Is anybody still confused and try to make it a little easier for you? No? Can you see that? I didn't get it. Okay. So when you put, remember the hole? The hole. There's the hole. Right there. Okay? When that hole, when you put that hole in the part, you can constrain your solution to say, when I put that hole in the part, I have to have that service finish on the hole after I make it. And when you do that, there's only probably one or two methods. Maybe there's really good milling or boring to get that for you. Or you can say, no, it's going to take a drill and drill out, and then I'll, I'll lap the finish onto or I'll polish it later. I'll get that finish. Okay. So where are we now? We're in custom needs analysis, specification, we're kind of branching into the concept, upper little FRs, right? That's where we are. Yes, no? You like talking, you like staying quiet? All right. So we have the task or customer needs identified, right? We got them all. Or we think we got them all. Now what we do? What do we do? Design requirements. Function requirements, right? Oh, functional. Functional requirements. The next step is functional requirements. In the academic design, we focus on a top down hierarchical decomposition of the functional and physical elements of the design. Starting with functional requirements and mapping those onto design parameters using a zigzag kind of pattern. The decomposition is essential for a good design and the application of the axioms. And a design can only be as good as the decomposition. If you have a piece of garbage decomposition you spent five minutes on, you're not going to have a good design. You're just not going to do it. If you do have a good design, you change your functional requirements in your head someplace and then write them down. Because if you understand the problem and have your functional elements written down, you can't come up with design parameters to meet those functional requirements. The question is how can we create the best decomposition possible? Step one. Hierarchical decomposition is identify your upper level functional requirements. You have to determine these in neutral, a solution neutral environment. So don't have any specific notion in your head how you're going to solve the problem. The example I always like is kind of a stupid child example. If you say, I want to make my lawn short, a lot of people say, I have to cut my lawn. Well, I can go buy goats, put it on my lawn, and they're going to eat my grass and make it shorter, right? Yeah? Right, I'm going to my grass to be short. It's going to be not so the best solution without a bunch of ghosts running around. And I don't like goats. Mm -hmm. Goats eat things and they get sick and die and bears eat them. Good. All your functional requirements have to be collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive. If I take all of my functional requirements and I add them together, do I get the parent of those functional requirements? Okay. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? If you all watch Professor Brown's lectures, he does a great job of explaining this. Much better than I could. So I hope you all watch his lectures. Mutually exclusive, they can't be shared. No sharing of functional requirements. They have to be individual requirements. 
And we're going to try to use the minimum number where it makes sense. Don't over constrain things when you just talk about it the whole. But uh, generally, I say this cautiously, generally the less number of function requirements, the better. Extraneous function requirements add unnecessary intricacy to your design. These are function requirements that you don't need. Extra functions are never a good thing. You just break more things to bust. Like these new cars, things, they have all this stuff and you don't need it and it breaks and I can't fix it. And my dad gets mad and throws wrenches at the wall. No, it's not good. How do we get started? What's the, how do we develop those first function requirements? Because those first function requirements are going to pave the path of your design. Like I said, we can iterate and go back and change them. But it'd be nice to have a way to kind of go on a good path from the very beginning. We're going, at, we're going to look at applying a theme to your function requirements. Themes guide the designer in the decomposition. These are some of the themes you can apply in your decomposition. Spatial, direction, location. I want to apply a force right here. Right? I want my force to go there. I want to go in this direction. Whatever direction that might be. Something like that. Temporal, time, situation. Professor Brown, you just you talked about the space plane, right? Last class? The orbital space plane? Well, one of, this is one of the papers he wrote. He used two different themes to break that down. One was a, was a, um, a temporal theme first. Protect the astronauts at takeoff. Protect the astronauts as they're exiting the atmosphere. Protect them during re-entry. Protect them during landing. Right? Twelve times. And he also used a hazard-based theme. Protect them from fire. Protect them from drowning, protect them from suffocation. So there's two different ways to look at things. I forgot which one he used in the file. One gave him pure FRs and network levels, so that's one he I forgot which one he was. Another one to look at is energy. That's good for manufacturing. Where is the energy going in my manufacturing process? Think we thought as the perspective you have on the design problem. Remember it says look at something from a different angle. To apply a different theme. You know, instead of thinking about the hazards associated with something, think about the time, right? The theme can influence the collectively exhaustiveness of a decomposition. Sometimes you apply a theme, all the equations aren't going to be obvious. Like if you apply a theme on protecting the astronauts, all the things that they could experience to hurt them are not going to be obvious to right after that. You have to go back and add more things and go through, and it's going to be complicated. But if you apply a time perspective first, protect the astronauts to take off. But what kind of problems they can have during takeoff? They can blow up. It's not good. You know, we've seen that happen. So it kind of narrows down your solution sets, and it makes it easier for you to see all the children that you can create from the parent. So this is from a presentation I gave at a different, like, uh, different conference. And this is showing some of the, the customer needs that has to happen in ski. So when we ski, we have to transfer all the control loads from the skier, from the skier to the ski, the the ski you do what you want to do. There are a whole bunch of dangerous loads that can be transferred from the ski to you. You can break your leg, you can tear your ECL, all kinds of bad things. And we have to absorb those. We don't want those to come to. Okay. So these are, so what I did was I studied the sort of four, I studied four different MQPs trying to solve that problem of keeping the skier safe by transferring control loads to the ski and absorbing control loads or interest loads from the ski to the skier. And three of the four groups applied themes in this manner. So they applied a control load versus dangerous loads first, and they got two main FRs. So they filtered the dangerous loads and transmit control loads. From there, they applied different themes in each branch. One was work. <coughs> so we have a force and displacement, and we're going to absorb the dangerous loads with that. And on the transmit control loads, they applied a location theme through the device, and then at the interface. So between, they were creating 
uh, a plate that goes between your, your binding and your ski. So you had to transfer the forces between your binding and the plate and between the plate and the ski. And you had to transfer, transfer all the forces through the device you created, so through all the moving parts force, the force has to go through. The other group didn't do it that way. They applied a different theme and different order. They applied a Cartesian theme first to so the initial function required to break it down into x, y, and z directions. They were only focused on one major type of injury, which is only seen in one direction. It's a very two-dimensional two problem, and the force is going in one direction. So they only had to break down one direction into transmit controls and filter injury loads. Now this allowed them to see more easily where they had to absorb the energy. This makes more sense for this particular group. And to show you, to show you that there are different ways to approach a problem and you get different e compositions. These are some of the devices they made. Uh, they all operate basically the same. They all absorb the increased load through rotation and dividing plate. And they all rotate about the toe, so the heel rotates down when the toe comes up to absorb the body who would use interior draw the injury mechanism. So even though they use different themes, they still got to the same similar results. Alright. So now I want you to be in your same groups. And I want you to perform a first level of decomposition of making this part for the manufacturing process. I want you to keep in mind what themes you're applying through your process. And when I ask you about the function requirements, I want to hear the themes you apply to get those function requirements. All right, I'm going to give you a little more time. I'm going to give you about 10 and 15 minutes to do this. He's going to want to be perfect. Yeah, and it's going to be so I hope you all have this done or are working to get it done. Or if you're going to look really stupid being up here and not able to do it. Maybe one more time, you need more time. All right, is everybody good? All right, so who wants to be the first group to come up and write down their function requirements? You guys do, okay. We'll let one person come up here, or you know, all you come up and write down your stuff, and then you can tell us why you picked things you did. So come on up. You're not talking to the microphone and say everything, or else it doesn't go onto the computer. You know, this will just about attach that to you somehow. So, attach microphone is a functional requirement? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. This is on forever. The functional requirement is allow people to hear me. All right, so we went with a time theme for our decomposition. So, like, what? steps we would do in the process. Um, so the first functional requirement was uh, cut the outer uh, uh, part uh, And then the design parameter. So the design parameter was using a hand saw to cut stock steel. So, yeah. so that's how you get your outer diameters. Uh, the uh, the constraints, for that. <coughs> the constraints you just write down the constraints. List the constraints? Yeah. Constraints, 10 points, yeah. Yeah. 10 point steel. Uh, and then, that's So, functional requirement number two. Um, was well, why, just write your functional requirements now. We'll get into the DPs later, I think. I think I the presentation right that.
Should right. we put the design parameters down? What are your constraints in? We have to tell them that they're either idiots or geniuses. If I take their function requirements and add them together, do I get FR0, which is make the part? Is it collectively exhausted? Is it? And mutually Did you make your part? Is it done the way I want it to be done? It's not case hard. It's not case hard. Case hard in that part. FR as, Wait, being, as a constraint. Well, it's not case hard right now, right? Uh, okay. Even if it is, you cut it, you're not going to have that case hardening on okay. that surface. The finished surface was the case hardening. That's, that's, that's case that's, hardening. Yeah, case hardening is going to go under the finished surface. All right. Just bring it down that way. So you're really doing, are you really doing a time theme? What's your theme? Yeah, time theme, because there's steps that you take. Would so, be okay. So you make your outer profile yeah. first, then you make the sort of... Uh, the hole. The hole. Yeah, the hole. Right, yeah, I'll buy that. We can go with, we can go with time. All right, good. Next group. Give us your function requirements. All right, who's the next group? I think you. This group. Where is this group? We'll do the same group. All right, go. Yeah. Oh, you want Function requirements or the design parameters. Well, cutting the stock is design parameter. Yep. Well, it was, so it's joining the whole. So it's case hardening. <laughs> when you do your function requirements, you have to do it in the solution neutral environment. Okay. With your function requirements, they are now. I mean, I mean, this is also a very bad design. Terminal design. This is awful. Okay. These are all design parameters because it's not in a solution neutral environment. These are all solutions to functional requirements. So you're applying, if I may, a, a material removal theme, cutting, drilling, right? So that's your theme for the first two functional requirements. So you want to remove materials to make correct size, something like that. And you want to remove material for the whole. And then Case harm will be a design parameter for a parameter for a hardened surface. So let's make some changes to this. So what can we say for an FR instead of cut stop? What can we say? Geometry, like they used last time. Geometry? That's not really a function requirement. We're going to go with, we can go with um, form geometry or cut geometry. Size geometry work? Size. Like size the geometry? It's not really. <laughs> just, start with, just start with the verb, right? Yeah, How do you use the process? But next is not. So technically, it's still a DP. 
Kind of, but we, I mean, running can be done. Okay, so things get a little murky. Because <laughs> then it could be under undercut of geometry, could be actually what we're doing. You see what we're doing here? We've got this little thing in the side. People will spend hours and hours doing this. It blows my mind. It's insane. All right. So, yeah. We're going to say, so what, what was your suggestion? Put cut geometry under DP and then under cut geometry, you do another, one, another DP. Okay. And you have what yeah. band saw you're doing whatever. So whatever what's, you're what's my function requirement then? Geometry. Geometry. It's got sort of the verb. That's constraint. Based on dimensions. The geometry. Conceptual stages, all right, things, things can be like vague, uh, no direction, just aimlessly wandering around, you know, where things are going. You know, you get to work the first day in your machine shop and you look around, you're like, oh, these big machines, man. You know? It's kind of like you're doing it right here. All right, so, anybody, got, anybody else have any suggestions for our first lunch requirement? I'm going to go with cut. Cut um, outside geometry. Because that's the generally general thing they were taking. Yeah, cut stock. Yeah, cut stock. Cut stock. Cut stock. Cut stock. Our geometry is a good name for stock. That's just the main thing. We're still using cut as, yeah, technically yeah. that is the design parameter. Well, design parameter could be mill. Mill, our mill. Mill, our mill. Mill, our mill. But is it not what cutting is? Not really, because cutting is kind of an action. Yeah, well, applying the theme of the material and all that. I'm going to say I want to form, form the part of the material. So is boring, would that be considered a functional part? Or would that be a DP? That'd be, you want to say bore the hole? Yeah. 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 You have to drill more specific. So well, drilling, I think drilling, drilling would be yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Correct. drilling, boring. Yeah. All those kind of things go ahead. Could EDM it? You could EDM it, yeah. Uh, no. Because you have to cut through it. No, like you do. They, they, they have little things that can go in. <laughs> so we want a hard surface? And we want to create service image. Right. And we're not going to be DVG. So what's our what themes we apply here? By mature removal, right? What are the themes we have? That's what I meant. Yeah, that's not really. Right. The big theme we applied was material removal. Right. Right. Uh, this is kind of how you're going for, right? It's just different wording stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Answer, come on up. Thank you. You guys. Remember, don't be afraid to fail and take risks. Are what makes good designers? Now, our decision is very similar to the last one. Actually, we have already draws from it here, but um, basically, well, well, based on the same should be the concept. Functional requirements is this part have a hole, have the surface and the curve. So we have, first of all, we'll, we'll uh, make the curve. Basically, we should just we'll cut well, leave, leave DPs later. We'll do the DPs. Okay. So just do functional requirements for now. But I like the way you're going. This is good. Yeah. So the next one is we'll make the hole. 
after that, fit, fit, fit surface requirement. That's what we make this three parts. Is there any? Uh, I'm sorry for that. That's good. Don't worry about spelling. Okay. So now, now the hole's done. Yeah. So what's next? Fit the surface requirements, the geometry and the surface. Okay, so that's all going once. So you're doing it yeah. whole versus rest of it. Yeah. Okay, it's good. No, um, no, I'm sorry. The first way make the curve because the curve is the oh the, the geometry the curve is the outside and the size. Yeah. So okay, you're gonna make the outside. Uh, yeah. Then you're gonna drill hole. Uh, then and then you're gonna polish. Surface, surface, polish, and everything else. All right. Yeah. So your theme was was like the the components of the part. Good. I like it. It's good. What about the uh, DPS? Well. We do it later. Okay. Now, if we combine all of their function requirements and we get FR0, we just make the part. Uh, no. Yes, no. No, anybody? Yes. Yes. What are we making this curve from? What are we making it from? We're making the curve from the giant square. This is that curve, right? Based on what you pick. You think or not? You think? I'm not sure, but just making the curve. How is it defining how big the curve is? Like uh, don't be based on the design requirements. So you can get you know, a flat saw cut out, bad saw, or you can get an extreme part of the cut. Good job. One thing, we brought, one thing I brought up was, what are you going to make this curve out of? Are you going to take a, a sheet and cut out the bandsaw? Or are you going to take an extrude part and, and cut little wafers out of it? And that's going to depend upon a lot of factors, like how many you're making. You know, if you're only making a few, it may make sense to go buy a plate and just cut parts out of this place kind of sheet. You know, if, if you're only making, if you're making millions, you're going to want to go get, you know, little wafers delivered to you for a big long bar and just cut them that way. So that's going to depend upon later when you analyze for probability success and how many of them can cost and those things. So that's going to come later on. And we're, we're not really concerned with that right now. We're just thinking out what we can do. We get some expert fun. There you go. How many, how many more groups do we have? Like, how many groups did not go already? Just raise your hands. One, two, you guys, you guys go already? So two groups? Alright. So you guys can join. I estimated to be five groups, and I was right. I was hoping someone would pick something different here. Everyone seems to be cutting because that's obvious, but you can also form it with forging. <laughs> It's not a solution neutral environment, Don. Forming is a solution neutral environment. So our theme was just material. The first step bar would be be the outer dimensions of the bar. Uh, the second half bar would be to make the hole. Just the third one would be um, the finishes uh, of the surfaces, whether it be in the hole or on the, uh, you know, on the surfaces. Uh, and also when it comes in hard. You know, Got to keep it as minimal as possible. Good. So you have kind of the same thing. So we already know that's it's pretty good. I should also mention a lot of things all the FRs should have are going to have a theme based on what you have in your shop. If you only have mills, you're going to be milling. You know, if you're in a forest shop, you're going to be forging, which is the way it works. All right, well, we'll ask you. Well, you know, we'll see.
So our first FR that we said was source material, followed by achieve specifications. And then we said that we would break this one down into three, uh, into three parts. Geometry, um, tolerancing, and surface finish. Um, so it would be almost like a tree. Yeah. Like a decomposition. Yeah. Like a hierarchy of decomposition. Yeah. yeah. So you guys went way up there to source material. I like it. It's good. Good job. Great. And then in DPs, you would just put the, you know, the actual hey, we're ways we're to achieve the geometry. Yeah, yeah. slow down when you get there. Cool. All right, good. Good. Awesome. Exactly. All right. So so now you're all going to make EPs, like whatever your launch requirements. All DPs. And I pick, everyone remember, does everyone remember this little eight service finish right here? Anybody guess why I picked eight? I already told them over there. I'm going to give you this little chart how you choose your DPs. I picked eight because it's right on the line here where a bunch of different things may or may not be able to get that service. Yeah. So you pick design parameters, you can look at our probability for success. I can make it from drilling, maybe. If I'm lucky, I get drilling. But I can pick one of these where it's black and I have a better probability of success. That, yeah, I'll probably get a game to finish. All right, so I assign some design parameters. Feel free to come up, come up with a bunch, make a list for each FR, or you can determine which is the best one based on probability of success later on. All right, use some time to do this. And I'll leave this up. If you have trouble seeing it, feel free to come up and take a look at it closer. Yeah. Process like carburizing. No, no, we need the server finish. We need the server finish. We also need the server finish. Well, no, I'm just going to have a server finish. 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 I'm just going to have a
and then you finish it with yeah. crunch or something so that it or it can be tough if you just screw the shape. Service of the, just the whole the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. So 
so it's fine. You have grinding, so then you get that service change pretty easily. Uh, the hardest service of car rising, yeah, they'll probably get the right service finish. Making the whole million, yeah, pretty, probably pretty good. Let's look if, does anybody know about the design matrices? Just in that lecture? It was in the previous lecture. Okay, let's go on. Um, so we're going to do one of these. So, no design matrix. Steel they sourced. We're going to say they picked the yield steel, so it's not going to be more. They need to see. So the zero. Okay. This kind of plate going to affect the hole. Shouldn't, right? Shouldn't? No. Kind of plate going to affect the surface finish? first. So we're not going to have any residual stresses in our part. So when we go to heat treat it, we're still going to have the same tolerances and positioning of all our features that we had before we heat treat it. And you see within two hours, less than two hours, we're already identifying all the problems we have in this manufacturing system and process already. See how fast this went? That's what we do AD design. Right. So here two come up and do their decomposition. This is why bad design is even the closest mic to the When you bore the hole, you have to drill a hole first before you bore it. So you said that another function requirement. Or and you have FR make the hole thing up too before you know uh, <coughs> drill and bore. It's kind of what the argument for what we're into use. So that's how the semantic is working on board.
so we'll uh, drill and blow. And the uh, harden the surface and the heat treat. surface finish, we'll go ahead and polish it. And that's where we can get them. Alright, anybody see any problems or want to make any comments about this? And we're also going to have constraints that we and bother filling in with all this. But, I think they did a pretty good job. So within a couple hours, we already got some design processes going on, good manufacturing processes. So if you guys have generally the same thing, you have to come up, but if anyone wants to share what they did and put their design decomp up, please come up and put it in. Anybody have anything drastically different? Yes. Come on. They did a good job, and I can tell that they put more function requirements into the design in their head, even though they may not have written down. So they have a couple steps in the hole, bridge of the hole, then over the hole. Um, the gosh, you can bring that down into create length, create hole, and then move the DPs over. But generally, that's it's pretty good. Um, like I said, design is black and white. Some people are going to want to write everything down and be super organized, but it's kind of that flow. I would encourage you to write things down and keep track of where you're going as you do things. But that being said, if you're on a super good brainstorming session and things are just going, uh, coming out, don't um, don't kind of slow yourself down on the set. Although it's always good to have something there to write things down. All right. Good job. All right, we're going to take a little longer break, five-minute break. Yes. <laughs> 